Hello, I'm Laura Richmond, counsel in Mayor Brown's capital markets practice, and I'm based in our Chicago office. Today, I'll be discussing the SEC's share repurchase disclosure amendments, which it adopted on May 3rd, 2023, by a three to two party line vote. The final rules require tabular day-by-day -day reporting of share buybacks without any materiality threshold. This needs to be done on a quarterly or semi-annual basis, depending on the type of issuer. And that's better than the next business day disclosure that was initially proposed. Detailed narrative disclosure is also required. And the new buyback disclosures are deemed filed for SEC liability purposes. The amendments apply to companies of all sizes that repurchase their equity securities that are registered under Section 12 of the Exchange Act. And this includes smaller reporting companies, emerging growth companies, foreign private issuers, other than Canadian issuers that report under MJDS and uh, registered closed end investment management companies that are exchange traded. Companies that file on domestic SEC forms must provide tabular day by day buyback disclosure quarterly on new form 26 to forms 10K and 10Q, as well as narrative disclosures in the main text of those forms. Foreign private issuers that report on forms 20F and 6K must provide the daily tabular buyback disclosure quarterly on new form FSR with the new narrative buyback disclosures in their annual report on form 20F. Enlisted closed end funds must provide tabular and narrative buyback disclosures annually and semi-annually on form N. CSR. The tabular disclosures require a separate role for each day a company repurchase shares during the reporting period. And there's nine columns of granular information about the repurchases. This includes the average price paid per share, the total number of shares purchased as part of a publicly announced repurchase program, the aggregate maximum number or approximate dollar value of shares that may still be purchased under publicly announced programs, the total number of shares purchased on the open market other than through tender offers or company put options, the total number of shares intended to qualify for Rule 10B18 safe harbor, and the total number of shares repurchased pursuant to a Rule 10B51 trading plan. The table must have a footnote providing the date of adoption or termination of any Rule 10B51 trading plan used for buybacks listed in the table. And finally, there's a checkbox on the top of the table regarding trades in company shares by directors and Section 16 officers or for private, foreign private issuers, members of senior management, within four business days before or after a company's buyback announcement. As for narrative disclosures, the SEC added new subsection D to item 408 of regulation SK to require quarterly disclosure of the company's adoption or termination of any Rule 10b-5-1 trading arrangement, whether or not a buyback occurred under that plan during the quarter that is covered in the Form 10-Q or 10-K. In addition, the company needs to describe the material terms of the Rule 10b-5-1 trading arrangements, including the date adopted or terminated, the duration of the Rule 10b-51 trading arrangement, and the aggregate number of securities to be purchased pursuant to the Rule 10b-51 trading arrangement. The SEC also amended Item 703 of Regulation SK 
as well as item 16E of form 20F and item 14 of form NCSR to require quantitative and qualitative details of daily trades occurring during the period covered by the report. These narrative disclosures must include the objectives or rationale for each repurchase plan or program and the process or criteria used to determine the repurchase amounts. Companies must also disclose the number of shares purchased other than through publicly announced programs, as well as the nature of those transactions. And for each publicly announced program, companies will have to disclose the announcement date, the dollar amount approved, and the expiration date, if any. Companies will also have to disclose any publicly announced program that expired during the period covered by the tabular disclosure in each publicly announced program that the company decided to terminate prior to expiration or under which it doesn't intend to make any further purchases. Companies must also disclose any policies and procedures relating to purchases and sales of their securities by their directors and officers during a company buyback, including restrictions. The amendments require inline XBRL tagging with detailed tagging of the quantitative amounts disclosed within the required tabular disclosures and block text tagging and detail tagging for the additional required narrative and quantitative information. Luckily, there's a transition period for compliance with these amendments. Companies that report on Forms 10-Q and 10-K have until the first filing that covers the first full fiscal quarter beginning on or after October 1st, 2023. So this means the first disclosures for calendar year-end companies reporting on domestic forms will be in their Form 10-K for the year ending December 31st, 2023, covering buyback activities that occurred in the fourth quarter of 2023. Foreign private issuers reporting on Forms 20F and 6K must comply with their tabular disclosures in new Form SR, starting with the first full quarter that begins on or after April 1st, 2024. The related narrative disclosures will be required in the first 20F filed after the foreign private issuer files its first form FSR. Listed closed end funds have until the form NCSR that covers the first six month period that begins on or after January 1st, 2024. Now, even with these transition periods, companies should start preparing for these disclosures now. For example, it would be useful to draft the objectives, rationale, and process disclosures well in advance. These disclosures must be tailored specifically to the company, avoiding boilerplate, and these may be sensitive disclosures. So allow time for input and review from various company departments, as well as outside advisors, senior management, and directors. Companies need to review and update their disclosure controls to reflect the amendments. For example, they need a process to gather information from brokers in time to compile and check the buyback data. They also need an ongoing process to evaluate their objectives and rationale disclosures to assess whether they need updating and whether the buybacks being reported that period in fact align with these disclosures. Companies and their boards of directors may want to consider increased documentation of their decisions regarding buybacks. Hopefully, the staff will issue some compliance and disclosure interpretations before the first disclosures are due, so stay tuned. 
To learn more, please visit our free writings and perspectives blog. Thank you.